Hey guys, Dan Frizzell here at Legend Studio. I'm messing around with some drums mixing today. I thought I'd share what I've been trying lately with you. Uh, here's Steve Brewster playing in our room. So let's take a look at the kick drum, shall we? Let me switch greens here. We'll solo up what we got going on. Cool. All right, let's take everything off and just hear the raw tracks. All right, I'm going to mute my trigger here. Here's what we got, just raw tracks. is a Beta 52 uh, right at the right inside the hole, and then a Yamaha sub kick right outside the front head there. So, so basically, what I'm doing on these tracks is I'm going to set up a gate here, and I'm going to do a little EQ on work on it. Turn that on, and then I got a little bit of the mag, and we're going to add that sub and 40 hertz in on it. So here's what we get when we turn those three on. So, oh, let me mute this guy. Here's just the 52. Okay, here's what happens we add in the sub. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the gate on it. There again, we got the Pro G running. Fab filter, great stuff. Turn that on, and then we got another EQ. We're going to cut everything above about, what, 150. The sub kicks really don't pick much up above that, so it's better just to get it out of the way and not have it there. So here they are together. Pretty cool, eh? All right. So uh, I also have a, a trigger set up here. Some sounds I've layered up and, and made. It's just one of the kick sounds. So what I like to do is just sneak that in with the live kick and just use it to round out the smooth out that top end a little bit. Now, what I do is route all of my kick tracks. So they're all routed, as you can see here, they're all going out kicks. So I'll go down here where you can see. So there's our kicks. Now I got a stereo return set up, and the inputs, the kicks, the outputs goes to my drum bus. So this is where I add any harmonic treatment, like a tape sims, that kind of thing. Um, I'd like to start off with the UAD SSL, probably my favorite channel strip right now. It just does with very little makes it sound great. So here it is with it and without it. Pretty cool. Now we're going to add some harmonic information. So let's get the old ATR. Again, UAD, one of my favorites. Um, this just has a great low end. Listen to what happens to the low end when we cut this thing on. Pretty substantial difference with that one and what I find if you put that on individual tracks and then sum them together sometimes you'll get some weird phase things happening it just seems to the more drive you do with it and everything the more harmonics are there and which causes a little phase shift so I just experimented and found it I like it better on the on a summed bus of all of my kick mics it seems to just react better also I'm using the uh, pro multiband I've been fooling around with this on the kick just Taking a touch off of that above 500, basically. Just taking a little bit of the kiss off the top in case he leans on the beater a little bit. It'll tame that. Cutting a little bit in the boxy range. So 250, 300, when there's a buildup, you'll actually see it duck. I'm actually boosting a little at center frequencies, probably around 50 or something. So check. Pretty cool. All right, here's another little plug-in that you guys should know about if you haven't seen it, the Brainworks BX Boom. It's basically a dynamic EQ. So what it does is it's like a reverse of a compressor. So when the level is there above your threshold, it'll actually gain your chosen frequency. So this is cool. You can actually switch. It just has a generic high, mid, low setting. Which I think the highs are around 100 ish, probably is what it sounds like. And the mids, probably in the 70s. And the low actually jumps down 50, 40, somewhere in there. So, and then you just simply 
turn your kick drum. So as you turn it up and down, the kick drum gets bigger, which is ironic, is what happens. So let's start it at zero. Pretty cool. It's hitting it a little hard. We'll back it off just a touch. And then I finally stick in just another EQ at the very end, and I'll uh, tame a few things. Uh, like in this case, we're in the key of E, so I'm cutting the actual E note in the 160s to get to help out the electric guitars later. Um, you don't really notice it that much. But it, 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 when the guitars are playing, it kind of helps. So also gives me, oh, I just cut that off. Let's put it back. Sorry, guys. Slipped, slipped the finger. We'll edit that out later. All right. So you also notice I've got, then I have a final phase switch. So... When I'm phase checking the kick drum to the overheads and everything else later, I have one button I can hit after all the processing and just flip my fret phase, which is kind of handy. So uh, that's pretty much the way I've been fooling around with the kick drum today. It'll probably change tomorrow, so you guys get back to work.